Hey, my brother, in this video, we're going to talk about why most relationships actually hinder the person and don't actually allow the person to grow into becoming the best version of themselves. And you can see this. Go look at how your parents were. Go look at how your friends are. Go look at your own relationship. Is it actually making you grow or is it hindering your progress? Are you just becoming this guy who just falls back on your relationship? It's like, well, I got that handled. I'm just going to chill out. And if you're going through a breakup or you've been cheated on, you'll see that there's a lot of complacency in, in place either by one or both people. My name is Ed Baxter and I help guys in betrayal situations. I've coached thousands of men. Tens of thousands of men have come through my doors in one form or another. I've had over 3,000 guys come through the Betray to Badass program. And that's what we do. We'll get you to that place where you make the right decision for you and your children. Most relationships become this comfort zone that you just kind of hang out in. Most people, when they do, when they're single, what they'll end up doing is they'll go out and they'll like go to the gym, they'll try to further themselves, they might read a relationship book, they'll go out there and become a better version of who they are because they need to in order to get somebody to be a part of their life. But as soon as they get into the relationship, what they do is they stop doing that because the conditions were met. They don't have to become better than they were before. They've done everything they needed to do to get this person. And so what ends up happening is, is they just fall back into this routine. The space of, let's just watch Netflix and chill every night. Let's just do the same thing we did yesterday. And so because their motivation, all their intrinsic motivation to get better in life was to get this partner, once they have the partner, they never no longer do the thing. So they end up gaining weight. They go back into just whatever sedation habits they might have at home, like just watching TV. And there's nothing wrong with watching TV, but all those healthy habits just got replaced by a lot of sedation. Let's just hang out. Don't have to do anything. We can finally relax. We've arrived at the place. And because of this, we get into this routine where we're not actually growing. And so this shows the partner, this shows your wife that you're not really committed to being the kind of guy she saw you being in the beginning. You're just going to do just enough to get by. This means complacency. You just let all that shit go. You're like, well, I'm too busy. I've got the kids. I'm too busy. I've got work. I'm too busy. I'm just tired and I just want to watch football. And so this complacency really shows her, shows your partner that you didn't really give a shit in the first place. You're only going to do just enough just to get them hooked and then you give them the takeaway. And because you've gotten into this place where you no longer have to do the things you used to do to keep the person, you start slipping in your habits. You start slipping and doing fun things and getting out of the house and you start slipping in your own personal growth. Then what ends up happening is you start to rely on your partner to make you feel better about things. And you think, well, this is what my, my woman should do. She should help me feel better whenever I'm down. She should boost me up. And I would tell you that, no, your mom would do that. And maybe your father would kick you in the ass. But you're a grown-ass man, and you don't need your wife to do this, and nor should she. It isn't her job. This is marked by this sense of codependency. And codependency tells you your emotional state is my problem, and my emotional state is your problem. So you're both responsible for each other's emotional state, where, there, where that should not be happening to begin with. You should both stand firm in who you are and take full responsibility for your own emotional state. And because you start doing this, you start ignoring more of your own self-work. So it starts from this place of, I just did just enough to get her. And now that I'm with her, I don't have to do those things anymore. And I'm going to just lay back and relax, which then complacency sits in. And in this place of complacency, the rest of your habits start to fall. And when you don't feel good, you then rely on her to make you feel better. And then you come back and you wonder why she doesn't want to sleep with you. When it's like, well, you're not going out there being a powerful guy anymore. You're going out there and you're just staying at home and you're relying on her to make you feel better about yourself, being your mom. And she doesn't want to be your mom. She wants to be your lover. And so when you make her be that position to be your mom, and she's going to do it because she cares about you, she wants you to do well. And so she's going to be there and she's going to listen about you complain about all your problems as you take no action to do anything with them. But at the same time, if she's doing this, you're not really turning her on because you're not showing her that you affect the world. You're showing her that the world affects you, that you are a victim of reality. And she didn't come to be with the victim. She wants you to affect the world. If you can affect the world and she's under your wing, then she can feel safe. Why? Because you affect the world. You are the one that makes shit happen. But if things happen to you, then it's just a matter of time before things fall apart. And so the third thing that can really hinder you in your relationship is your partner's negative actions can start affecting you. So if your woman is very negative all the time, you're going to start becoming negative. If she sabotages herself with eating and stuff and you have a hard time with your weight, you're going to get fatter. If you're having problems, having ambition in the world, and she keeps sabotaging your endeavors and telling you that you can't do it, yeah, you're not going to go do it. A lot of guys in a relationship, they don't really want to grow. 
mainly because they don't really see the, the benefit of it. They don't see the benefit of it because their woman will just keep taking whatever she's getting from him. And so over time, the relationship starts to wither, you give it to codependency and complacency, lack of self-growth. And then if somebody tries to grow, the other person pulls them down like a crab in a bucket. And so you might be in one of two situations here where you want to grow, but you're afraid that you're going to outgrow your woman or that she might try to outgrow you. And if you're not fully present and ready to go take action in your life, how are you going to expect your wife to do it? You can't lean on her to get you to be motivated to go do something. That would be a reversal of roles, right? You're the guy who goes out there and goes and does stuff. You were the ambitious one. And she typically follows your ambition. And so if you're the one who's lazy and sitting around and becoming complacent, she's going to follow and be whatever trend you set. Or she'll do the same thing to you. You'll try to go to the gym and then she'll tell you, well, I don't know if you should go to the gym. You need to be here with the kids more. Or I don't think you should go to the gym. There's other women that I don't want you to talk to. And she'll just buy snacks and stuff that you don't normally have in house, but she starts buying them because she knows that you'll eat them. Because she knows that if you rise, it's going to force her to rise. If you rise, then it's a mirror of her reflection of how much she's not. The delta starts to grow and it gets too big. She's going to feel it. And she has two options at this point to either sabotage you and bring you back down or to rise with you. I can tell you a good partner is going to boost you up so that you go. And then when you do go, she'll rise up with you. And so your partner is your biggest contributor for your success within your life. If you've ever gone through a breakup or your wife has cheated on you, you can tell that this one thing is the biggest thing that can contribute to your entire happiness. It affects every aspect of your life. It affects your health. It affects your wealth. It affects your relationship with your children and your friends. It even affects your relationship with God as you feel like you've even been betrayed by God. And so this problem of your, your queen has to be somebody who can really support you and be part of your vision, which is the fourth problem you'll run into with being in a relationship is your partner could lack your support, your growth. And so she can do it passively. And I talked about this a little bit more where she could just actively mess you up. She could put some sabotaging things around the house if you're trying to go on a diet. She could put some snacks out. Or if you're trying to go to the gym, she'll just complain about how you shouldn't be going. You're not spending enough time with her. Or if you're trying to get a new promotion and you're trying to you know, put more hours in at the office or you're trying to start a business, she'll sabotage it by just cutting you down, making little remarks. And so they'll resist you in your growth. And so anytime you have your partner resisting your growth, just realize that this is a reflection of how they're operating. And if you want a woman that rises with you and that can hang with you where you want to go, you're going to have to have a woman who can actually do this. And so a lot of the times that she's going to feel like you're going to outgrow her. And if she feels like you're going to outgrow her, then this means that she, you're going to leave her. You're going to find somebody better, somebody younger, somebody hotter, somebody more whatever it is she's feeling insecure about. And so she'll do these things and she'll passive aggressively try to sabotage your endeavors to do better just to keep you going low, keep you in this codependent situation, keep you in this place of complacency. And even though both of you hate the situation, it's somewhat comfortable and so you're fearful to leave it. And this is marked by people who have no or have had very little healthy relationships in the past. In other words, they either could not date the people that they truly wanted to, or they could not keep and maintain healthy relationships. And so you're the best that they ever got. If you leave them, then it must be true that they're not worth very much. And so what they're doing is they're not necessarily trying to sabotage you, but they're trying to keep you from expressing a fear that's already embedded within them, making it a reality. So a lot of the problems that come with these is that when you're with somebody, you keep trying to change them. You keep trying to change this person. You hope that they're going to become somebody that they're not. You're hoping that they will, in some better future, she'll become more loving, more doting, more caring, more sexually attracted to you. And so you keep waiting for this place where she's going to be different. Now, on the flip side of that, you're not accepting her for who she is right now. And so make no mistake, she feels that. She feels that you don't accept her. She knows that you don't like who she is. And so you're going to get a lot of resistance from her when you go and you try to make changes. Because on the flip side of that, she's going to feel your judgment. You're like, well, I'm making these changes. Why aren't you? I wish you were better. I wish you were more like me. And so you're going to get a lot of testing and fighting from her when you do this. And so part of this is you have to drop the judgments and expectations on her. You have to just go. You just have to fucking go, and hopefully she will follow you. And when she does, you praise her all, all the way. You just say, good job. I'm glad, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're meeting me here. This is amazing. This is where I want you to be. I want you to be with me. And so a lot of this is you want to communicate your goals with her. Communicate what it is that you want in your life. And communicate exactly why you want it. You set some sort of a vision and purpose and reason why you're going there. And you make an invitation for her to come along. Now, it's not a, you don't dictate it. 
because most people do not want to be dictated. They don't want to be told what to do, but you can invite them. You can make an invitation. As, as you go and you do this, maybe you go to the gym, maybe you start a business, maybe you do whatever, you become a better person, she's going to want to be a part of it. See, the game is seduction. To entice the person to follow you. It's never this game where you're trying to force it. Because if you try to force it, you're always going to get resistance. And you might be able to force a person to do it, but on the flip side of that, you're going to get a lot of resentment. And then if it fails for them, or they're just doing it for you, you're going to get a backlash twice as hard later on down the road. And so when your partner is resisting these things and they're trying to sabotage you, you have to set some boundaries. You have to say, hey, I'm going to go do this. You don't have to do it. But at the same time, you can't stop me from going and trying to grow and be better as a person. And you have to be very hard with these boundaries. And you can't accept all the arguments and stuff either. You have to go for what you want. And if you keep doing these things, right, you're doing all of these things, you're going to have to, at some point, you're going to have to evaluate if the relationship's really right for you. Now, if you're doing both these things, you're communicating your goals, you're setting boundaries on, on what is, is and isn't acceptable when it comes to you trying to move forward in your life, and you're not being complacent anymore, and you're not taking all her emotions to heart. In other words, you are starting to stand sovereign in yourself and, and you are starting to realize that her emotional state is not your fault and that you're starting to push back when she does this to you because you're breaking the codependency, then you're going to have to some point, you're going to have to evaluate if the relationship's good for you. Most guys do not ever think this. They just go, well, I'm with her, so I must be with her forever. And most guys pretty much marry the woman after the third date. It's freaking ridiculous because that's what she's asking for. The woman's always asking for the commitment, so he just gives it up freely. A guy who gives up his commitment freely is like a woman who sleeps with guys very easily. Yeah, she's getting what she wants, but it's really at your expense, and it makes you cheap, right? If she just sleeps with a guy, it's not that hard for him. She must do it with everybody. There's nothing special about it with you. And if you give up your commitment so easily, then are you really valuing yourself at all? It's like, no, I just need a piece of pussy, so I'll just lock it down as hard as I can. And it's ridiculous. As a man, you don't have any value for yourself. And so most guys will get into a relationship and they'll stay with this person because men are loyal by nature. And so when they get with a woman, they tend to stick with her. And he doesn't necessarily dump her when he needs to. And so you must always be evaluating the relationship. Realize that unless you're married, every stage is just an evaluation. Even if you're engaged, you're not married to her yet. You're still evaluating if she's marriage material. Until you're absolutely fucking certain beyond a shadow of a doubt, you should not marry this person. Most people don't do that. Most people marry for security. They, don't, they might find that they find the person attractive, they have a good time with, and they say, can I make this work? Okay, how hard do I have to do to make this work? Well, there's 1% chance that this will work, I'm gonna do it, which is insane. You should never do that to yourself. In fact, if your relationship is getting in the way of you setting goals and boundaries, check out this video here. Anyways, brother, I hope this was helpful for you. If you like this video, hit like so other guys will see it. And if you wanna see more, hit subscribe.